Welcome to a Heart for Women podcast. I'm your host, Pastor Delphine Jordan. Today, our topic is being led by the Holy Spirit. But before we get started, I'm going to ask the ministers to introduce themselves. Hi, I'm Minister LaDonna, and thank you for that beautiful introduction, Mom. I look forward to joining you all on this topic this evening. Hi, I'm Minister Kim Winborn, and I'm excited to share in the Word of God this evening. I'm Minister Jay, and I'm humbled and grateful to be with this awesome panel of women on today. I'm Minister Karen Long, and I'm always excited to see what thus saith the Lord. So I'm looking forward to our discussion on this evening. Okay, the scripture that we're coming from today, Romans 8 and the 14th verse. Here, Apostle Paul began to talk to the Romans, and he quoted this scripture. He says, those that are led by the Spirit of God are the sons of God. And here Paul was beginning to tell them that believers, when you begin to read the context, here Paul began to tell them that the spirit of God deliver us from our old nature and he help us to walk in righteousness. And I feel that we are in a time that we as children of God, we should be bright lights to those that are in a dark world. And A sinner even should know when we're a child of God and a saint should know. And today is sometimes it's so hard to see who are children of God because you don't see the new nature. You see more of the old nature. And here in Galatians uh, 5 and 19, it talks about the works of the flesh and it talks about adultery, it talks about lust, it talks about envy and jealousy and malice. Um, it, It talks about those works of the flesh. And Paul is letting us know that now we are sons of God and we're no longer in bondage to this flesh. We don't owe this flesh anything, but we owe and we we are bought with a price and do with the power of the Holy Spirit who enable us to walk and to be more like Christ. And today we want to help you with what we have learned, how to be led of the Holy Spirit. And I've learned one thing, to be led of him, you have to be willing to submit your will. If you don't submit your will, you cannot be led of him. And how are you going to be led of him if you don't know him? And we had spoke on our past podcast about knowing the Holy Spirit. And once you know, you have to be willing to submit your will. And he transform us to be more like Christ. And when we are more like Christ, we have something to offer to those that are dying in this world. But before I go any further, I'm going to ask my daughter, uh, LaDonna, to talk about being led of the Holy Spirit and as sons of God. Good evening, everyone, again. I um, love the question, uh, Mom, that you had posed to each and every one of us um, about this topic. And it just made me think about my personal walk with Christ. And the question that you posed to us was to answer, how do we know that we are led by the Holy Spirit? And it's so important just to know some practical things and simple understandings in the word of God, especially now with, you know, what's going on. You just have to be led now for your protection, for your safety, um, just for your your peace. Um, So I think it's such an important topic. So what I began to think about is my walk with Christ and how did I come to a place where I knew I was being led by God? And I'm not saying something like, um, we know that all fast food is bad for us. So I'm not saying like the difference between a Big Mac and a Whopper, Um, but knowing that you could have someone that you are very close to that 
um, is saved, is a Christian, is full of God's word, and they could speak something to you, um, and it can sound right, it can even be the scripture, but it's not how God is leading you in your life and at your walk and in that timing. And I began to meditate on the story of Moses and Joshua. When the leadership was um, transferred from Moses when he was uh, soon to pass away over to um, Joshua. And I wanted to go to the scripture in Deuteronomy to kind of put a story behind what I was just saying about being led by the Holy Spirit. So if we can go to Deuteronomy 31 and eight, and it says in the eighth verse, let me get there. It says, and the Lord, he is the one who goes before you. He will be with you. He will not leave you nor forsake you do not fear nor be dismayed. And I looked up the word led from that scripture that um, my mom gave in the beginning for as many as are led by the spirit of God. These are the sons of God. And to be led is to guide on the way, especially by going in advance. So we follow people that we trust. And you know that you're following the leading of the Holy Spirit just sim simply by knowing the fruits of the Spirit because that's character. We were given an assignment um, by our pastor, our leader of this woman in ministry, and we all follow because we trust that the task that she gave us was something that we know was going to be for the benefit and the edification of us and the ministry and us as women in the body of Christ. So we begin to know that we are being led by God's spirit, the Holy Spirit, the more that we spend time with him. He said his word is a lamp unto our feet. It's a light unto our path. So there's something that we have to do to put ourselves in a place that we will come into that familiarity with the Holy Spirit and knowing when it's leading us as trusting that his spirit is leading us. So you have to know that it is God that is leading you in a particular situation. And then when you go over to Deuteronomy 32 and 12, it says, so the Lord alone led him. So Joshua wasn't following any other God. He wasn't following any other doctrine. He wasn't following any other way but God's way. So in that time, some of them were following other gods. So in, in to bring it into this dispensation of time, we have to be careful with the social media. We have to be careful with who we surround ourselves with. We have to be careful with where we fellowship. What is it that we, what are those little foxes? What are those little things that we have that's coming in our ear that's distorting us to, from hearing and understanding when we're being led by the Holy Spirit? All these things funnel into us. And I always like to think of a clear funnel. And when you buy it and it's new and it's fresh, the water can clearly go through. And over the years, if you don't learn, if you don't learn how to maintain it, how to keep it clean, you get build up in there and you got to use Drano and different things to clear it out. So it's it's just like us in 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 the, in the spirit. What is it that we are surrounding ourselves with that we are confused and we're not sure and we don't have that firm foundation of Christ, the cornerstone of knowing that his spirit, the father, the son, and the Holy Spirit all is one. And as we know him, then we know we are being led by the spirit, but it takes time and it takes growth. Wow, that, that was just phenomenal way you was explaining that, LaDonna. You know, one of the scriptures just came to me when you was talking about um, that that funnel and how that sometimes you you have to keep it clean that it can have a buildup and junk can get in you. And I was thinking about the scripture um, when Paul began to talk to the Romans 
And he said, the goodness of God leads to repentance. And that's Romans two and four. And I know within my life, I can tell when the Holy Spirit is leading me to make a change, to go into a transition, um, to, to, to make a change in my life. I, I just thank God for knowing him and knowing how to submit my will unto him. See, God has given us the power of the Holy Spirit and the Holy Spirit help us. He enable us to be more like Christ. And what I love about the Holy Spirit, God does not beat us up, but he help us to be more like Christ. He's given for a purpose, but if we don't submit our will unto him, he cannot lead us. He cannot help us to be more like him. Many receive Jesus as as Lord, but they don't submit their will. And that's the purpose of the Holy Spirit. He's to help us to take more on the image of who Christ is. God forgive us of our sins. He cleans up our heart, but he want us to be more like him where we are walking as sons. Uh, when Paul was coming from that scripture, um, uh, the 14th verse of Romans 8, and you read on down, it says that we are sons of adoption. He has adopted us into the body of Jesus Christ. He's made us sons and, and how he's given us the Holy Spirit. And, and he said how the Holy Spirit cries out, Abba, Father. And when I begin to do study on Abba, it means Papa. It means one that who takes care of us and who loves us. And we have to have that revelation that Jesus want us to be more like him and that he's empower us to be like him. He wouldn't tell us to be like him if he didn't empower us to be like him. You understand? It's just like you are my daughter and, and you're, you, you have some resemblance of your dad and of me and you will always be my daughter. And, and as you grew up, you, people begin to see more of the image of your parents in you. So as you were saying that it's a process and we have to grow, but you gotta be willing to wanna grow. To those that are listening, if you don't allow yourself to be submitted unto the Holy Spirit, you will stop your growth. And this is something that um, I have, it says, if you're not watchful in your growth with God, your life can be in bondage for years full of human wisdom and not the leading of the Holy Spirit according to knowledge. So we need some knowledge. And, and it's so important, like you were saying, LaDonna, that we have to be around the right people and what we receive it into our heart because that word is life and is living. And you know me, I'm a preacher and I can preach on and on, but I'm going to ask Minister Kim to elaborate on Romans 8 and 14. Praise Jesus. Well, as I think about Romans 8 and 14 and being led, to be led, as Minister LaDonna said, is to be guided. And when I think about being led by the Holy Spirit, immediately I think of John 16. And Jesus says, however, when he, the spirit of truth has come, he will guide you into all truth for he will not speak on his own authority but whatever he hears he will speak and he will tell you things to come so to be led by the holy spirit is to know the word of god because he's not going to speak anything outside of god's word and it comes back to that knowing and Psalms 46 and 10 tells us to be still and know that I am God. So when we are being led by the spirit of God, we must know him. That means we must spend quality time in the secret place. We must spend time in the word, in the fellowship with the saints. And also, as Pastor Dale was talking about, the works of the flesh. And I'm so thankful for our bishop. And he admonishes us consistently to examine ourselves to see what's operating on the inside of us and being led of the Holy Spirit. The Holy Spirit will prompt you when there are some things going on on the inside that's not glorifying the Father. And I'm so thankful as I continue to examine myself, I'm also reminded Ephesians 4 and 22 says to put off the old man 
and be renewed in the spirit of your mind. So to be led by the spirit of God is to renew your mind, renew your mind according to the word, renew your mind according to what Jesus has said and stand on that truth because the Holy Spirit is going to guide us into nothing but the truth. Amen. Uh, Minister Karen. Praise the Lord. Everybody has just been so awesome. I've been, I've been sitting here just applauding, saying, woo, go women of God. <laughs> it's been so good for my soul. I'm telling you, it, you all are being led by the spirit of God to pour it to my spirit on this evening. And I'm so grateful. Um, Pastor Dale, when you gave us this subject matter and you, you provided the scripture, when I read over the scripture again today, the spirit of the Lord really dropped in my spirit how this passage really is an identifier. When you are led by the spirit of God, then you are a son of God or a daughter of God, really a child of God. It really states the fact that your conduct identifies who you are or better whom you belong to. So when I am operating in the spirit of the Lord and I am led by the spirit of God, I'm identified as one of his children. And I think that is a great statement to walk away from on, on today with this lesson. Um, the question you posed to us was, how do we know when we are led by the spirit, by the Holy Spirit? And so that to me, I took that as a personal statement. And my response to that is by assessing how much my flesh is alive. That's where I went with it. You know, I know I'm being led by the spirit of God when that flesh is dead, when my flesh is mortified, when I'm not thinking about what Karen wants to do, but I'm thinking about God, how can I please you today with what I'm saying, with what I'm thinking, with who I'm around and what I'm doing. And so it's really a simple thing. I, didn't, I really love this, this topic. It really, I, I thought, oh, I can roll with this. Thank you, Pastor Dale. I thought I was gonna go with it. But the spirit of the Lord, this is where being led by the spirit comes in. The spirit of the Lord said, make it plain and simple for people. It doesn't need to be 15 steps. People just need to understand that you are being led by the spirit of God when your flesh is not alive, when your flesh is dead to what you want to do. But people also need to know, um, like Minister Kim said, that you have to examine yourself to see if you're in the faith. And when I read that, the spirit of the Lord showed me that it's not just examining yourself to see if you're in the faith, it's examining yourself to see if you're being faithful, to see if you are being faithful to the principles of Christ, to see if you are being led by him in all things. And I also wanted to share on tonight that to me in my, when, in my walk with Christ, I know I'm being led by him when there is this acute awareness of something that I didn't know, but God puts it in my spirit to know. It isn't something I learned. It isn't something I heard. It isn't something I've seen. There is just a knowing in my spirit. And Minister LaDonna spoke to this about just some places you, you want to go or you start to go. And there's this knowing that says, not today, don't go there today. And you may not know what the full story is. But the spirit of the Lord will reveal it in the end. And he could be protecting you from danger, you know, whether it's danger that's tangible or some danger that could affect your spirit, man. And so I'm grateful to God that just know, just trusting that acute awareness in your spirit that when God's, there's a prompting in you that says not to do something or a prompting to do something because it's not always bad. It's always a prompting to do something as well. Sometimes I'm prompted to just stop and pray. I don't know the circumstance and he'll put an image in my spirit of a person. And I don't know what to pray. I don't know what they're going through. I haven't spoken to them. But then he starts to minister to my spirit when I begin to go into intercession for that person. I just begin to call out their name. The spirit of the Lord to tell me healing or deliverance or they're, they're struggling in their flesh, whatever it is, but that'll come as I begin to pray. But you've got to trust that and you grow into that. I'm not sure if it was Minister Kim or Minister LaDonna who said that, but it's a process. 
you have to mature to that level. You have to mature to that stage or that development where you're not just always looking for a sign, but you it's a knowing and it's a part of you because the spirit of the Lord is in you. He lives within us and he's leading and guiding us into all truth. He is always telling us what he wa wants us to do and how he wants us to live, how he wants to be pleased by us. And I don't know about you, but I'm willing to do whatever he wants me to do in these lives last days. We are coming to the end of our days. And I want to be in right standing with God. And I want to see as many people come into the kingdom of God. So I want to always be sensitive to whatever the spirit of the Lord is leading me to do. And I don't want to be selfish or stingy or, or self impulse or self, what's the word? Self, just selfish. I don't want to be selfish with what I'm doing. I want to be able to share what I'm knowing and share what I'm feeling and share what God is speaking to me. And I want to share with the world. I want to, don't want to keep it to myself. Many people need to be helped. Many people need to hear that Jesus still saves, that God still loves, and that he's still drawing men to him. And I have the, the ability to do that. So why not be led by him in all things and share that with others? And so I'm just grateful on tonight for this, this topic, for this subject matter, and for the opportunity to be amongst women who are such giants to me in the spirit realm. And I just thank God for each of you. Minister Jay, um, elaborate on Romans 8 and 14 and how you learn to be led by the Holy Spirit. Amen. I've just been listening to the enriching word from each of you ladies tonight, and it is truly a blessing of God. And what I have learned is that God says that a good man's steps are ordered of the Lord, and he delights in his way. And my heart's desire is always to not be leaning to my own understanding, but in all my ways, I desire to acknowledge him and he would direct my path. And as Minister Karen said, it doesn't happen over time. It comes with spending time in prayer. It comes in spending time in meditating on the word of God. God's word says that my sheep hear my voice, amen? He says that I know them and they know me. Well, how do we get to know the voice of God, which is the Holy Spirit, is but taking the time to fellowship with him, to meditate on the word, amen? And when situations arise, in our life, we know the difference between the Holy Spirit and the voice of the world because the Holy Spirit is always going to line up with the word of God. And when situations come and you find yourself acting out of order, when you know the word of God, then you know, okay, that is not the voice of God. And I need to line back up with the word of God and be obedient to the word of God. And, you know, I thought about the fact that when we're being led by the Spirit of God, being led doesn't always mean having forward motion. Sometimes it means being still and knowing that he is God. Sometimes we tend to get out ahead of God. I think about Abraham, right? And Abraham and Sarah wanted a child. God gave them direction. They heard the voice of God. But rather than to wait on the Lord, and be of good courage and allow God to strengthen their hearts, they got out ahead. And as a result, Ishmael was born in the midst because they were not being led by the spirit of God. And so for me, my heart's desire is always to seek God, to be still, to rest in the peace of God that surpasses my understanding. And it's only then when God says, okay, Jay, it's time to move, that I then desire to move in the things of God. And honestly, I'm reminded of a man of God who was led by the Spirit of God. And that was in the book of Acts chapter nine, Ananias. I consider the fact that Ananias was called of God to go to a street called Straight to minister to a man, Paul, who was out persecuting and killing believers. And Paul, Ananias said, God, you, you want me to go and minister to, to this man? And he said, yes, because I've been called of, of, he's been called of me to minister my word. This was a man who was anointed of God and knew the voice of God, because truly in your own flesh, you'd be more like Jonah going, oh God, he's about killing people. I'm not trying to be a part of that. 
But this was a man who was led by the spirit. And even in the face of what he saw and knew, that internal voice led him to be obedient to the voice of God. And when he did that, and he went to the, the street called Straight, and he entered into the house, and when he prayed over Paul, immediately Paul got his sight, not only his natural sight, but he pertained his spiritual sight. And see, that's what it is when you are being led by the spirit, when you're being obedient to the voice of God, things don't always seem like what you should do. You know, God says, my ways are not your ways, neither are my thoughts your thoughts. But the reality is the more you get into the word of God, you find that people look at you a little differently. Amen. Because we don't, we're not to be like the world. We're not to act like the world. So every single day, Paul said, I have to crucify this flesh. So when I'm leading, being led by the spirit of God, I have to die daily to this flesh in order to be obedient to the leading and to the voice of God. I always meditate upon the word. I am, it's no longer I that live, but it's Christ that lived in, in me. And the life that I now live, I live according to the spirit of God. So every single day, my heart's desire is to be pleasing to God, to delight in God, and to be a doer of his word and not just a hearer of the word. So for me, that's what I feel like it's important to be led by the spirit of God, that I can be that child of God, always giving God glory and honor in everything that I would see, say, and do in life. You know, I've been listening to each one of you just given so much today of, um, of insight and in how to be led by the Holy Spirit. Um, I would like to go back and bounce off uh, Minister Kim when I was elaborating on the works of the flesh. And here Paul began to talk to the Galatians church, uh, the fifth chapter, the 18th verse. It says, but if you are led by the spirit, you are not under the law. Now the works of the flesh are evident. And you know, sometimes people just don't know what the works of the flesh are. They just, it's just a norm to them. You know, they feel that because they receive Christ that they don't realize that the spirit of Christ in us, it, it, it deals with us to, to put to death some of those things of the flesh that Minister Kern was talking about. But I, I would like to call out these words. It, it, it says, now the works of the flesh are evident which are adultery, and that's a lot of going on in the body of Christ, a lot of Christians, fornication that is really strong in the, in the church, and you can see that in the book of Revelation of the seven churches. Um, there was only two that didn't have to repent, but it was a lot of fornication going on, sexual immorality, and I'm seeing that they don't realize, the Christians some today, that we've been endued with the power of God, and he has enabled us to be holy and to be pure, and, and that when there are some works of the flesh, that God would deal with our thought because sin really first comes with a desire and once you give him birth to that desire it brings forth death because see the spirit of God when he comes in our heart he gives us eternal life and so he help us that we don't have to walk in the flesh and then he began to say uncleanness he says lewdness adultery sorcery hatred contentions I see a lot of contention sometimes among amongst the saints, they don't realize that it's not so much the enemy, um, um, the person is coming against them, but they must understand the spiritual realm. When Paul began to talk to the Ephesians church, when he tells them to put on the whole armor of God, because we don't wrestle against flesh and blood. So you got to know if there's contention alive in your flesh and you're going to have to deal with it and say, no, God, you, you call me to peace. You call me to, to love my neighbor as I, I love myself. And then he began to say jealousies. I see a lot of jealousies. This one gets something, that one gets something, and they become jealous. But you are heir to the throne room of God. There are abundant life for you and, and the promise of God. And that you don't have to operate in your flesh. And then he says uh, outbursts of, of wrath. And we see a lot of Christians that some of them cussing. 
not a lot. Well, I don't know if y'all seen a lot, but I know I've heard some people that confess to be of Christ and they cuss like up a sailor and they say, oh, God, it's not through with me yet. If you don't submit your will unto the Holy Spirit, you will never grow. And you have to get in this world, like Minister Kim said, you have to grab it. And like my daughter said, it's a process. You got to understand the transition. You got to look who you are around because I always say association brings on simulation. Whatever you want to be like, that's what you're going to be around. You want to be like Jesus. You want to be around Christians that uh, have a heart for the Lord and, and want to be more like him. And then not only that, he said selfish ambition, like Minister Kern said, I have to check myself, make sure I ain't selfish and that I'm willing to serve, you know, and to give myself for the work of the ministry. And then dissension. Sometimes people have attitude problems. They think they know everything and, and they don't realize the Bible says be quick to hear and slow to speak because the wrath of man worketh not the righteousness of God. So we have to be still on the inside. Um, that is one of Minister Kim's words, still. And, and like you said, Minister Jay, um, the Holy Spirit, when you're led, doesn't always mean moving. And like you said, it, it, it waits for a prompting um, when, when to do something. And like Minister Kern, I had that too. And the Holy Spirit tell you when, when not to, what to do, when to say, when to go. And that comes with a growth. And, and I love it. And, and you have to get in the word and get that word in your heart. And it talks about envy. It talks about mercy. Murders. And the Bible say that if you hate your brother, you already don't commit a murder. You don't have to pull a gun on him or, or, or a sword or something, but just hating a person or dislike, you need to get that word hate out of your um, vocabulary, out of your heart and, and have a heart of love because we don't no longer walk in this flesh. And, and revelries, um, partying. God delivered me from, from partying. I know what this flesh would, used to do when I was at the party, the life of the party. I mean, I could show you, I could dance, but God delivered me from those works of the flesh. And then he says, like him, we was once that, but now we, we walk in the spirit of God. We bring forth love. We bring forth joy and peace and, and faithfulness and goodness and kindness and long suffering. And th this is the character of God. This is being led of him to be transformed. You know, um, we can go on forever about this subject because I, I, I remember the scripture when Paul said in uh, the Romans 12, when he tells us to present our bodies as living sacrifice, holy and acceptable unto him, which is our reasonable service and, and be not conformed to this world, but be transformed by the renewing of our mind. So as we get in this world, like Minister Jay was saying, it renews us, our thinking. We, we want to be more like Christ. And I just thank God that even my daughter gives example about Moses and, and, and Joshua and how the transition and how that we got to go from glory to glory and, and faith to faith. Jesus wants to save us. He wants to clean us up. He wants to renew our heart. That's why we need to be led by the Holy Spirit, because sometimes he leads us when there are times we need refreshing from the throne room of God. And like Minister Kern, you were saying that sometimes God leads you to pray for different ones. You don't know what they need, but you know what? It, it, it just can sometimes be annoying. Um, um, you, you know, God will lead you um, to pray for someone. Do it in secret. God will reward you. Why you got to get on the phone and text and say, well, you was on my heart and, and you, you being nosy. That's what you're being. You're being nosy. You want to know what's going on in the person's life. And sometimes ain't nothing going on. Maybe God will have you to pray for them because there's something he wants to prevent for happening in their lives. Now, if they want to open up their heart to you and share things up with 
what's going on, then that's a different thing. But be led of the spirit of God. Make intercessions. I think that we spend too much time trying to do surgery on one another and still in preaching the gospel, which is the power of Jesus Christ that cleanses our heart. We have thoughts in our minds. We, we try to judge one another outwardly, but you don't know the heart. God looks at the heart. The Bible says, acknowledge Jesus in all your ways, and he will direct our past. So that is leading of the power of the Holy Spirit. So submit your will so that you can be led of him, grow in him, get a revelation that you are a child of God, that you are heir of Jesus, that you are somebody, that you are precious, and you are endued with the power of the Holy Spirit. Sometimes if you're discouraged or if you're depressed, get in his presence, begin to worship him. You don't have to know the Bible from A to Z, but all you need to know is just get on your knees and call on him and say, Jesus, I need help. I want to be more like you. I want people to see you in my heart. It's so good that you can walk down the street and you can see a child of God because something about them, it just shines on them. They don't even have to open up their mouth, but you can say that's a child of God because I can see the light and see that light in us. It shines in darkness and it wants to expose things that, that are in us that is not of the Lord. So we're talking about being led of the Holy Spirit. I just love you out there. Keep on listening to us. Subscribe to us because God is using the women in our church to impart life to you, to transform your lives, to give their testimonies and how to be led by the power of the Holy Spirit. See you next month. God bless you. Thank you for watching, and we appreciate your continued support. If you would like to make a donation, please go to tbwc.org give.